You might have heard of the day the Earth stood still, but how about the month it stood still? So, Fulmer published this video a few days ago, and he comments that uh, he's been watching NASA Stereo Behind Core 2. He actually means Stereo Ahead Core 2, uh, as you can see here. He keeps getting the names confused. Behind is currently out of commission. Ahead is the one that is still operational. He's been watching for six weeks now, and Earth is not acting normal at all. First of all, it stayed in place for virtually a month, and second of all, it's been a flat Atari Pong line. Okay, well, let's take a look and see what he says and see if we can't figure out what's going on. There she is. Miss Earthica. Na, 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 na. All right, so this is Earth showing up around the 18th of December. And then Earth just kind of hangs there. See? So we're now at Christmas. Earth's still kind of hanging out. It's been a week. Earth's still loitering. In the habitable zone. We are now traveling. We are now traveling in what is known as the year 2015. And of course we have a giant laser down there. So we're traveling. We got a bunch of CMEs popping off. Now it looks like Earth's going backwards. And it's just kind of hanging out in place. And it's got that black dot behind it. There's no sign of that gorgeous comet, Love Joy, anywhere. So Earth's been basically hanging out in almost the exact same spot for a month. That is very weird. That is very, very weird. Now let's go over here to notice how these planets move in and then out of frame. Notice how they're moving? That's Jupiter. Notice how Jupiter's moving at a pretty fast clip? And then our out of focus space duck of doom. Just looks like it has two candlesticks around it. Notice how they are all moving. Okay, so first of all, let's address the motion of Earth as seen from Stereo Ahead. Now, you might remember uh, back in August of 2014, I made this video where I described all the equations for how to calculate the apparent position of Venus as seen from Stereo Ahead. Uh, I'm not going to go through all those equations again. Uh, you, can, uh, you can go see that video if you want all the nitty-gritty details. Uh, but... Uh, I did create an Excel spreadsheet at the end of that that had all those equations, and what I've done now is I've simply modified it to address a slightly different question, which is the apparent position of Earth as seen from stereo ahead. Now the problem this time is a little bit different uh, because we don't have stars uh, to astrometrically solve the image with. We just have star, the sun. So that's our point of reference. So we need to know where the sun is from stereo ahead as well. And so the new revised version of the spreadsheet here has those equations as well. And it's very similar to calculating the apparent position of a planet, only this time we're calculating the apparent position of the sun. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much the same stuff. So it calculates the apparent position of the sun and the apparent position of Earth, uh, as seen from stereo ahead. And again, that's a very easy change from the previous spreadsheet, because all I've done here, basically, is change the... Uh, uh, change the orbital elements that it's calculating from and also change the formula a little bit uh, that it uses to calculate uh, the uh, uh, elliptical longitude as seen from stereo head because there's different equations for inner planets and for outer planets uh, but other than that it's it's pretty much the same uh, the other major change here is the the fact that instead of going just based on the coordinates and plugging that into an astrometric solution, we need to know how far the planet is from the sun and so that we can figure out where it should be in the core 2 image because the sun is, of course, in the center of those images and it's represented here by a white circle and Earth is offset by that uh, by some number of pixels. So we, need, we want to know how quickly it moves in the image. How, how fast should it move, you know, how long should it, Sit, seem to sit in one place. So to calculate that, what we really need to know, all we really need to know, is how far it is from the sun. What's the radius from the sun? Uh, and that will tell us, first of all, whether it's in the image or not, and second of all, where it is in the image, how far toward, how far towards the edge of the image it is. So um, this spreadsheet will do just that, and it does that with a pretty simple equation, actually. It's uh, the arc cosine of the sine of uh, Earth's declination times the sine of the sun's declination plus the cosine of the Earth's declination times the cosine of the Sun's declination times the cosine of the Earth's right ascension in degrees minus the Sun's right ascension in degrees. And that's actually a fairly straightforward, simple formula. And that gives you the Earth-Sun distance, the angular distance between those two objects in degrees. Now we want to know 
how far that is in pixels. And first of all, it's important to note, this is actually the true size of the image. Uh, if you download the raw FITS files, which are available off the FTP, and you open it up, you find that the image is a 256 by 256 image. Now that's because the stereo head spacecraft is basically on the opposite side of the sun from the Earth, and so we're getting low bandwidth, and they're sending back uh, all the only thing they can send back, which is basically beacon quality data. And so that is a 256 by 256 resolution image. Now if you look into the specs of Stereo Head Core 2, you'll find that it's a 2048 by 2048 pixel CCD, and at that full resolution it has a resolution of 15, an angular resolution of 15 arc seconds per pixel. Now a 256 by 256 image is eight times lower in resolution, so you have to multiply this angular resolution times eight, which gives you 120 arc seconds per pixel at that 256 uh, resolution. Divided that by divided that by uh, 3,600 arc seconds per degree, and that will allow us to convert from uh, degrees of separation to pixels of separation, which in this case on December 18th at 9:21:08 gives us a uh, um, uh, separation distance of 102.6 pixels. So if we go back to that image, there's that image, December 18th, 9:21:08 Universal Time. Uh, this is where that puts us at one. That's about 122.7 pixels, and that's where it puts us right, basically where Earth is appearing. Now, the reason why Earth looks like a line, well, f for one thing, you've got some CCD blooming going on there, no doubt, from overexposing Earth. But you also have to consider the fact that Earth has a moon, and the moon is not at the exact same spot as Earth, so it can actually exacerbate that a little bit, uh, because you've also got the moon's light some small distance from Earth. It would only be a pixel or two away from Earth at any given time. And so it can also contribute to the apparent elongation of Earth, if you will. Now, he notes that on Christmas that it hasn't hardly moved at all. So what does the spreadsheet say? We do the calculations based on the orbital elements. We go to this, sorry, December 25th at 1041.07. That gives us uh, an angular separation which has hardly changed. Instead of uh, 4.09 degrees, now it's 3.96 degrees. Well, this is practically the same thing. And in pixels, that's 118.8, which puts us right about here. That's basically where we see the edge of it. So, yeah, it's uh, pretty accurate, and it's exactly... Uh, what we see in the image in terms of it hardly moving at all. Now he goes even further. He goes to January 18th, 2015. And also note that in the video uh, there's a black circle behind Earth here. Now sometimes in the beacon images that can be due to the fact that they're using what I like to call a pseudo dark subtraction to remove glare and that's why you really need to process from raw images, the FITS files, not the JPEGs, because there can be artifacts that are present in those JPEGs which are not actually present in the original images. So on January 18th at 202606, 20, the separation, sorry, that should be January 18th. The angular separation is 3.51 degrees. So in a month, from December 18th to January 18th, it has only moved half a degree as seen from stereo ahead. And in pixels, that is 105.2, which puts you right about there. Just basically where we see Earth. Now these equations are somewhat approximate because we're not accounting for planetary perturbations here, but still, that's not bad. We're getting within one or two pixels of the actual location of Earth using the spreadsheet. Now he mentions Jupiter as well, and notes that Jupiter's moving much faster, so what's up with that? Well, the situation's actually quite simple when you break it down uh, to the basic orbital elements, because what you have here is stereo head is orbiting ahead of the Earth in uh, around the Sun, but only by a little bit. It takes stereo head uh, hardly any less time than Earth to go around the Sun once, just a little less time. So it's it's going ahead of us, but not by not at a ridiculous velocity. So relative uh, to the Sun, Earth won't appear to move all that fast. Jupiter will, because Jupiter is in a radically different orbit. So we can take Jupiter's orbital elements at the same epoch right here, paste that into the spreadsheet, and now instead of giving us the coordinates of Earth from stereo head, it's really giving us the coordinates of Jupiter from stereo head. 
So if we go back to December 2014, basically where we started, 47 point uh, 47.3 degrees is the angular separation uh, in mid-December. And let's go to Christmas. 41.27. So it's moved uh, about 6 degrees. 6 degrees in a week, as a matter of fact. Now, remember, with Earth, uh, the spreadsheet told us that in a month of time, it only moved half a degree relative to the Sun, as seen from stereo head. Jupiter has moved 6 degrees relative to the Sun, as seen from stereo head. And remember, stereo head is always pointed at the Sun. So when we see Jupiter moving along in uh, the stereo HI-1 or HI-2 cameras, you have to remember that the whole spacecraft is continuously pointing at the Sun. So you're really looking at a change in the motion uh, of Jupiter, the, the position of Jupiter, relative to the Sun, even though you can't see the Sun in the picture. Because, still, the spacecraft is tracking, uh, tracking the Sun as it moves around it, as it orbits around it. So let's go to January 2015. So if we go to January 18th, 2015, it's now only 21 degrees from the sun. So it's booking right along. That's exactly what we expect because Jupiter is in a very different orbit. It orbits the sun much slower than stereo. So stereo is lapping Jupiter in orbit much faster than it laps the Earth in orbit around the sun. We can actually make a prediction using this spreadsheet because now we're getting the coordinates of Jupiter as seen from stereo head, not Earth. Remember, we changed the orbital elements out. We replaced it with Jupiter's orbital elements. So let's figure out when Jupiter should appear in stereo head core 2, because it's not in there right now. But as you saw in Thor's video, it's moving that direction. It's moving towards core 2. So let's go to today is, uh, well, we're just past midnight. So uh, February 6th. It's been, it's been February 6th for a while by universal time, actually. Uh, but OK. so. Today, later today, uh, Jupiter's position relative to the Sun, as seen from stereo head, is about 5.22 degrees. Now let's go back once more, just so we can remind ourselves. On December 18th, uh, 2014, when Earth first appeared in, uh, in stereo ahead, its angular separation from the Sun at the edge of the image was about 4 degrees. Okay. And that put it 122 pixels from the center of the image. That put it basically right at the edge of the image. So let's figure out where, when Jupiter hits that same point. Very, it's very handy, uh, the fact that uh, the image is actually a circular aperture, because all we really need to know is the radius from the sun uh, to know approximately when an object's going to enter the field of view. So if we replace the orbital elements of Earth with Jupiter's, like we just did, and we look at December 18th, there it is, 47 degrees. Let's go to 2015, February 6th. So again, today it's about 5 degrees. And let's advance forward. Okay, now we're at 4.4 .4 degrees, almost in the image. Let's go to February 8th at, you know, about 09 hours, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, in that first image, first image of the day there was 92108. It can vary a little bit when you take the first picture of the day. But okay, right here, we're just under 4 degrees. So sometime on February 8th, we expect Jupiter to enter the field of view. Let's see, if we go to one hour, it might be, it might be just after the first image of the day, somewhere around there, though. And again, you know, the accuracy here is within... Uh, it's within a couple pixels, so it's pretty accurate. So we should expect then that if the spreadsheet's working properly, in two days we should see Jupiter entering the field of view at about uh, February 8th Universal Time. It'll cross that four degree threshold and enter the field of view. And uh, once it does, it's going to move through the field of view much faster than Earth. It's going to seem to be whipping past Earth, which Initially, it might seem counterintuitive because Jupiter is orbiting the Sun much slower than Earth, but it's not really the uh, velocity of Jupiter that's causing it to whip past Earth. It's, it's the difference in velocity between Jupiter and stereo versus between Earth and stereo. Earth and stereo are very similar. Jupiter and stereo, not similar at all. So if we go to the next day, it's, it's already almost a full degree different. Let's, let's put it a week from, from the 8th. Let's put it... Uh, on uh, 
February 15th, 2 degrees from the sun. So it went from 3.18 to 2 degrees, and from, uh, let's see, let's go back to February 8th, about 120 pixels to 60 pixels. Look at that. It's, uh, it's moved, effectively, 60 pixels in a week. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna whip through the field of view compared to the compared to the Earth, and that's exactly what we expect based on the orbital elements. So I'm gonna paste the orbital elements for Earth back in back where they belong, and put that there. So now it's once again giving us uh, the orbital elements of uh, or the position of Earth as seen from stereo ahead and relative to the sun, as seen from stereo head. Now notice, when we did that, okay, so now it's telling us uh, that Earth will be about 87 and a half pixels, about 88 pixels from the sun on February 15th, uh, versus Jupiter, if you remember, it was only about 60. So Jupiter will have already passed Earth uh, going towards the sun uh, by February 15th. So I'm going to upload this spreadsheet, and I'll put it as a link in the video description so you can check it out for yourself. Uh, I hope that answers your questions, and uh, have a nice day. Clear skies.